Hello, how's it going? Welcome back to the ray tracing game. Sort of one of the big challenges of ray tracing is dealing with recursive functions. As you would be aware, a GPU doesn't handle recursive functions too well. Let's say that we trace a ray and that ray hits a sphere at a given point and then rebounds, goes along, might hit another sphere, and then it goes off and hits the sky or something. This is a path which terminates at the sky and it collects a little bit of color at each step. So let's put H0 for hit zero, H1 for hit record one, H2 and so on. So if we were to look at this point here, the color that we have at this point will be equal to, now each sphere is gonna have a reflectance. The reflectance parameter determines the importance of this reflected ray and it's energy conserving. So let's say we have one minus the reflectance and I'll put H0 being the color of the sphere at that point. Then we'll have our reflectance times the color of our reflected ray. So then we go along and we look over here and we say, okay, at this point, the color will be one minus the reflectance of sphere one times its color, plus the reflectance of sphere one times the color of this one. And you can see the problem. This may look like a recursive problem. However, it can be recast as an iterative problem. We have um, color, if I can spell, equals color of sphere one times one minus its reflectance plus the color of sphere, uh, the reflectance times the color of the next hit and this is happening recursively. So then we go reflectance one times the next hit. And then let's say for instance, that the ray reflecting off of that sphere goes and hits the sky. So it sort of terminates at that point. What I want to do is I want to recast it so that each term is only showing up once. So if I look at H naught, I have my, my hit zero times one minus reflectance. Plus then if I look at this term here, I have hit one times one minus reflectance one times reflectance zero. And then if I look in here, I have hit two times one minus reflectance two. This is a lot of fun <laughs> times R one times R naught, because as you see, this is nested brackets. And hopefully you can see that this pattern will continue on and on and on. And so looking at it in this term, we can see that it is a recursive problem. And we can see that there's always this sort of multiplier which, which pops on there. So I'll make a function. the specifics of which are not super important at this point. It's just important to note that we have all the information we need to work out things about our world. I was just lost in thought for a second there. So basically what we want to do is we want to somehow sample the color of the sphere registered in the hit record and possibly apply some lighting. But then what we want to do <clears throat> is we want to uh, multiply that by one minus, I'll call this the local reflectance. It's the reflectance of the sphere. And then we'll multiply it by the reflectance factor, the global reflectance factor, which sort of indicates how much electromagnetic energy is in the, the path. So then what we'll do is, is we'll make this an in-out variable. We'll multiply it by the local reflectance and then return color, something like that. That's the theory. And the most important thing is to break the problem down, write out a few iterations. Let's get into it, let's code it up. Here we are in the code, as always, check the link. I'm going to go over to my ray tracer 
everything's basically set up for me. Here I'm just going to make a few alterations to my structs. For one, I'll make that reflectance and um, BVH nodes probably fine. The camera is fine. The ray is fine. I'm going to simplify this render state quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of these fields. So we're not going to store the color. We're not going to store the position or the normal or any of that. All we're going to do is store the index of the sphere, which was currently hit. This will reduce the data size of this struct, speed things up quite a bit. All the information that we're after should be recoverable, knowing how far the ray has traveled and what it hit. So I'll close that down. And I'm now going to simplify or sort of bring this together a little bit. So these are sort of my intersection tests. These are my prototypes here. But in addition to intersection tests, I'm going to have ray coloring or surface interaction or something like that. So these functions, we're going to have two of them. They're going to return colors. And there are two cases with array. First case is when a ray hits something, it scatters. And in that case, I'm going to need a reference to the ray because that ray will be altered when it rebounds off that surface. I'm going to need to know about the hit record. And this is where I'm going to also work with my reflectance. Now the case where the ray completely misses is quite a bit simpler. We're still going to need the ray, but we will not need to modify the ray. We're just going to simply look in the direction of the ray, see what it hits on the sky, and that's it. I'm also going to, why not, I'll go ahead and modify this main function. What I've got here is I've got this pixel. I'm going to start that pixel off as black, completely black, and then I'll have that reflectance parameter. That's fine. Okay, so we go we have a ray, we sort of trace with it. What I'll do is after tracing, I will say uh, test whether we hit something. And if we hit something, we will basically sample that object and reflect the ray. That's what the scatter function will do. And then otherwise, we will sample from the sky and then break out of that loop. We do not need to reset the ray. That will be performed by the scatter function. And we also don't need all of this stuff. So I'll just, and just simplifying it, what I'll do is I'll just plug in that pixel variable that will set the screen. So hopefully this is making sense. Again, we start off with complete blackness and then we keep tracing. And every time we trace, we accumulate the result into that uh, variable whether that be a sphere or the sky. Those are the two cases. And then in the end, we, we go ahead and store that into the image. Now, there is a little bit more work that we need to do, of course. So I'll just clear this up and let's have a look now at tracing. This is a little big, but all of this is fine. On this branch of the if statement, we are testing against a sphere. And I'm going to take modify this function so that instead of just working with spheres, it accepts a sphere index because the goal will be to store the sphere index into that render state. So again, I'll just go right up the top with my intersection and I'll reset that. So it's just, it's a very minor change. We're just putting in the index of the sphere. Now we can close that down and we can go down to the hit function and modify this so that it works with sphere indices. And just while I remember it, there's probably something else I missed here in this trace function. I'll just check through it. So we take in the sphere index, remember all that stuff, and then we keep stepping through the acceleration structure. Now this is the part here that I'm into. So I'm just gonna switch this around. I'm not going to sample from the sky. I want to do that in the miss function. So all I'm doing is I'm just just setting that up. So just as a refresher, it's been a while for me as well. When I perform that hit function, if the hit is successful, 
then it writes back that um, hit something function and it also updates the information in the render state. On the other hand, if that hit is unsuccessful, it doesn't change the values in the render state. All it does is sets that flag that the render state's hit was false. And so if I see a render state with a hit value of false, but I see that the hit something variable evaluates to true, then that means that all of the state information in the render state refers to the last successful hit. And so what I'm doing, I know this is a little bit esoteric, but what I'm doing is if I know that I've hit something, I'll just set that flag in the render state so that when the function which calls this sees the return value, it knows that it's got a legitimate hit. I hope that makes sense. Play around with it, but I'll just close this down for now and I'll get back to this, this hit function. So again, I unpack the sphere that I'm looking at. All this stuff is just intersection tests. That's fine. Now, remember, I don't need to set any of this stuff. So what I'll do is I'll just set the index. And this is a sort of, we'll look at it later thing. So we don't need that or the color or the roughness. So hopefully you can see this is vastly simpler. And again, just a really minor modification, but I'm gonna switch this to an if else, because in some cases there are some optimizations that the driver can make with a standard if else. Fingers crossed, I think that's all right. I'll just get that out of the way. And this is fine. Now I'm going to work on my scatter and miss functions. So far, what we're doing is we are basically, yeah, fetching the sphere that we want to get information about. We are recovering the geometric information. So we're working out which position in space that, um, that ray hit and what normal vector we have there. Then I'm unpacking a bunch of information about the sphere. So what I'll do is I'll take the color and we'll have color minus one times the local reflectance. But then as I was explaining on paper, we also need to incorporate the global reflectance factor. Now I'm going to go ahead and reorient the ray. So we'll set up its origin. Okay, so the ray at this point is correctly reflected. All we need to do is return the color. Okay, now the miss function should be very straightforward or we'll basically do is sample the sky i think that's fine so i just want to step through this again because we did get a little bogged down in the implementation when it came to um, hitting the ray we look at the main function again we start off with zero this is going oh, black this is going to accumulate the color for that pixel start off with full reflectance, full power on the ray. And then we keep bouncing around. And whether we hit or don't hit, that determines which function we're going to use. Are we going to sample from a, a sphere and reflect the ray? Or are we going to sample from the sky and end that loop? Let's see what this looks like in action. We'll just open up the um, ray tracer, cross our fingers. Okay, that worked. Now, as you can see, it is, ah, oh, wow, incredibly bright. Okay, I may have done something wrong here. Of course, I forgot to attenuate the reflectance. Okay, let's do that. Let's say reflectance is equal to reflectance times local reflectance. Cool. This is good. We're learning stuff. Okay. So now we should have more physically correct 
All right, so it still looks bright. Maybe not quite as bright. Something is funky. What a thing. What a thing to miss. Okay, so what's happening is that, of course, we have this reflectance variable, which is tracking along and it's gathering everything up. When we go and hit the sky, that needs to be multiplied onto the chain. Otherwise, it's simply going to add on the full sky power, ignoring the fact that the ray has bounced a bunch of times before hitting the sky. So I really hope this is it. Let's give that a go. And that is looking much better. So if I look at this, looks more reasonable. But there's just one, or there's a few things we can do. First of all, I can now hopefully see that as I keep doing this, the, the rebounds are becoming less and less visible. So I can actually really dial up the number of, the number of bounces. So I'll go to my ray tracer and say, hey, let's do 100 bounces. Now, as you can see here, doing 100 bounces does affect the frame rate somewhat. However, if we look at this diagram, there's not a lot of bounces going on directly between this sphere and the, the sphere above. And the reason for that is due to the attenuation of that function. Each successive bounce will be contributing less to the final image. So this can give us a further optimization. Look here, the frame rate's like 2800 frames per second, 2700, something like that. What I can do is I can, I can go along, do my stuff, and then if my reflectance drops below a certain level, really doesn't matter, then we can return because we could keep rebounding, but the spheres will have an insignificant contribution to the image. So we can have a look at that. Something is sort of messed up there. That's sort of messed up. Frame rate's good. Oh, okay. What? How messed up is that? I should not be returning. I should be breaking. This is like... I swear, I'm trying to te teach programming. This is like um, amateur comedy sometimes. Okay, so there we have it. Frame rate is good, and we do not have any any weird effects. Sort of. And you can tweak that parameter as you like. Now, this looks okay, but these balls do look a bit bright. So it's important to remember that currently I'm sort of taking the color of the ball by itself, not taking the environment into account, I mean beyond the reflections. But it's probably a good idea to take some ambient lighting into account, because actually the color of this, let's go down here, the color of this ball shouldn't actually be pure white because it's in an environment with this sort of greeny sky all around it. So what I'll do is I'll just roughly approximate that by adding a, an ambient variable. So let's close this off. I just picked this from... Um, this is sort of a, a, a bluey, a greeny blue sort of color. So I just went with that. So the way I'm going to incorporate that is I'll go down to the scatter function. And in the scatter function, when we sample the color of the sphere, we will um, tint it according to the ambient lighting. So hopefully this will start to look more natural for the environment. And I really just picked a color which I thought pretty well represented the um, the lighting conditions. There we have it. So hopefully these, these spheres are starting to look more realistic. And as with everything, you can play around with the parameters, tweak it, get it looking however you like. That'll be it for now. As always, you know, that'll be it. Hope you enjoyed it. All the best. See you again soon. Bye.